Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CB Modi here back with another video and as the title says, we're finally here with the brand new WD Black NVMe SSD. Now despite being the name exactly the same as last time and despite the design being exactly the same as last time, this guy is totally different from the last generation WD Black SSD. And today, well, we're gonna take a look at it. Now we did do a multi showdown as we can see right there and I did go ahead and test what I thought was this SSD but what it has actually turned out to be was a test last generation because they look so damn identical so whoops I'm gonna have to put a note on that video now but either way today we're gonna be testing the latest and greatest WD black SSD and put it through its paces to see just how good it is and really how it stacks up to the offerings that have come out of Samsung with insane read and write speeds but first the design department and this guy has launched back in April of 2018 which is only really last month but it has definitely well not really changed that much in terms of the design department don't get me wrong there's been a slight change with the PCB being now a dark black rather than a light blue but really that's where all the changes have really well been there's no different model numbers well there is different model numbers but it's not like the 860 to the 870 as we see on the Samsung side rather than 960 but my point being, just on first glance between the two different generations, you're really not seeing that much of a big difference. It's under the hood that really gets some major changes. Now there's also to a sister drive from SanDisk, the Extreme Pro NVMe drive, as now WD owns SanDisk and I guess SanDisk didn't want to miss out on a super fast NVMe SSD. So everything we talk about here with the WD Black basically can also to be transferred over to the SanDisk drive, but because I didn't get my hands on it, I don't also to want to make a video yet well until I get my hands on it but from what I've seen on the internet both of these drives are basically identical apart from one says SanDisk and one says WD but for the rest of the design it's rather simple with a black WD black sticker written on it with WD black on it and really that's kind of it in terms of the design department it isn't really too much here it does measure in however with the M.2 2080 form factor so do make sure that your NVMe SSD slot is large enough to fit this guy it is with the larger type so do keep that in mind and that's about it when it comes to the design department it is kind of a, a little bit boring to look at but let's speak of something a little bit more interesting and look at the specs on paper so in terms of the actual specifications as I did mention it is running on the uh, 2080 form factor which means it's going to be the larger form factor of NVMe SSDs what a lot of high-end ones are coming out at we're also to looking at the full NVMe PCIe Gen 3x4 interface so we'll be using four PCIe lanes so just like the size make sure you have enough PCIe lanes free to take advantage of all the speed that this drive can offer on top of this we're also also to using a custom WD controller running on the 28 nanometer process, SanDisk 64 layer BICS3 TLC NAND flash, which is, haven't really seen that before, but either way, a nice set of NAND flash right there. And we're also to getting sizes of 250, 500, and also to one terabyte. Gone are the days of the little 120 gig drives. We're now going from 250 and upwards, which I'm not gonna complain with as well. Bigger drives are getting a lot cheaper and it just makes sense to have larger form factor drives. I've always said that the 250 256 kind of gig drives is sort of the sweet spot between getting enough storage but also to without blowing the bank but as prices are coming down 250 is a nice starting point right here WD also to offers a five-year warranty and up to 600 terabytes written on the one terabyte model with only 200 terabytes written on the smaller 250 gigabyte unit and as we saw right here it is definitely possible to hit those numbers however you really can only hit those numbers if you are in a server environment Great example is my SSD in my system right now. I've only managed to do about 50 or so terabytes written to the guy and it's about five or six years old now. So if you worry about this drive running out, you have a lot of rights to this drive before it's actually going to die. If you're planning on putting this in a server running as a cache in a big data center, yeah, you're probably gonna run into that write limit. But for most of us, general day-to-day -day usage, we're never gonna hit this drive limit. But don't worry too much. It's really not gonna be much of an issue. Other things that I do wanna point out 
out and actually stand out to me is you actually get a full copy of a Chrono's true image for WD drives uh, with the purchase of this drive. So I think that's kind of good if you want to transfer your uh, OS over to the SSD without having to reinstall everything. A nice little feature right there. A lot of SSDs do come with this software, but a Chronos is definitely a well-known piece of software in the industry. So nice to see that they do include that right here. And finally, we do get a maximum operating temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. So if you're worried about overheating, it definitely does have some safeguards here, like what a lot of other SSDs have. But let's throw it into some actual tests. Cool, we can talk about paper specs all day and what it looks like and that kind of stuff. We want to know what kind of performance we're going to be getting out of this drive. So we broke out the 7700K test bench and GTX 1080 Ti, and it was thrown into action. First off, we hit it with Crystal Disk Mark to see what we can get in terms of synthetics, and man, this guy is super speedy. In our Maker Showdown, I couldn't really understand why there was so much interest around these SSDs, but because I was testing the last gen one, that's why I didn't see as good numbers. But comparing it today, damn, we do get some really good numbers. If we put up the brand new Samsung drives versus this drive versus last generation WD drives, there is some really cool numbers. And I was actually still, and even now, I'm still blown away by seeing 3.4 gigabytes per second on those reads and writes. It's absolutely insane to see that kind of speed. And honestly, if it was just a few years ago and you were to tell someone that I want to drive with 3.4 gigabytes per second on it, you'd probably be called crazy and you'd be thrown away because that's something you could only achieve with RAID just a few years ago. But well, today we can see it on a single drive. So I reckon this would be a cool experiment to put this in like three or four way RAID. That would be some really super fast storage. But all in all, in terms of synthetics, they are absolutely fast and do come very close to the Samsung offerings, which is not too bad. Seeing that Samsung has been the top, well, master of the SSD world for quite some time. Now, translating these synthetics into the real world, game load times were super snappy, though they weren't exactly much faster than a standard SATA drive, thanks to the fact that laws are diminishing returns are definitely a thing. And also too, when it comes to boot times, this guy puts just about every other drive to shame with super fast boot times that make me wish I had this drive for my personal rig. Unfortunately, I can't have it in my personal rig. If you are worried about gaming and game FPS, don't be too worried here. Taking a look at our obligatory game FPS numbers, we see that they're not affected at all by uh, the actual SSD itself. So for those wondering, no, there is no difference in terms of FPS. There's also too no stuttering or any issues when it comes to frame timing. So honestly, there's not too much of a difference here. All in all though, I'm really impressed with what this drive is able to deliver and what we saw in the test today. It's not exactly every day that we see a relatively new manufacturer, being WD, come to the market with a brand new controller design that actually stands up and beats out a lot of the competition, with really only Samsung being the guys that they just can't beat yet. With a price point that's also too not too unreasonable at 45 US cents per gigabyte, the price point, the performance, everything about it is definitely on point. Point. The only real wish that I did have with this drive was I wish it had a 2TB offering or a larger capacity offering, as it's nice to have 1TB, but definitely if you're going all out on a super fast SSD, you might as well go all out on storage as well. But all in all, it is definitely delivering some really great performance. Not to mention, the controller that WD is actually used here today will also to be supported into the future, thanks to the fact that it is supporting brand new flash standards, so all WD really needs to do is pick up the controller from this SSD, plop it into the new one, make some tweaks under the hood and boom it's ready to go with future technologies. This basically means that WD is definitely going to be up there when it comes to performance SSDs today but also to into the future thanks to again the fact that their controller is definitely able to work with newer technologies. And really the only competition for this particular drive is the brand new stuff out of Samsung so if you're looking for the top end SSDs it's pretty hard to go wrong with this drive but let me know down in that comment section what SSD do you run in your system. I absolutely love my time with this drive here, but let me know what you have down below. If you want to pick up this particular drive, I've left them linked down in that description box along with the other videos that we did talk about should have been popping up right there. Otherwise, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.